Gangs relative. Known as Jimmy Henchman. Also known as Jimmy Henchman. Jimmy Henchman has been accused for cocaine distribution. An alleged drug kingpin. Drug kingpin. Drug lord. Is now in the hands of federal authorities tonight. He was pushing dope from California all the way to New York. He turned himself into authorities in May for drug charges. Using the mobile of distributing multiple kilos of cocaine. In the 1980s Brooklyn, even shadows were scared of the legendary Jimmy Henchman. Rikers Island, that formidable rite of passage for many, met Jimmy in his youth. But Jimmy had dreams, big ones. I, I try to treat everybody the same because I don't know who the next Tupac really is going to be. I need to keep firm on the ground because I don't know when I'm going to be banned from this game. Twist that could make even Hollywood writers jealous. Jimmy decided to trade street cred for the music business, aiming for a legitimate life. However, this tale of success and newfound legitimacy end up in the legal hall of fame and two life sentences. In this video, let's look at what really happened to Jimmy Henchman. Hip Hop's Forgotten Moguls People often talk about Jimmy Henchman without mentioning his brother Mario, but their stories are closely linked. To grasp the full picture of Jimmy's journey, we must consider both sides, their shared challenges, successes, and strong bonds. By acknowledging both, we can uncover the complete story of Jimmy Henchman. Mario and Jimmy, born to working-class Haitian parents, experienced a turbulent upbringing that would shape their paths in life. Growing up in Vanderveer Estates, a housing project in East Flatbush, Mario Roseman sought to set a positive example for his younger sibling, especially Jimmy. However, their home life was marred by abuse, with their father, Constantine, being an abusive womanizer who subjected the family to violence. At 16, Mario faced a tough situation when he stepped in to protect his mom from his dad. In return, his dad kicked him out, forcing Mario to survive on the streets of Brooklyn. Mario briefly joined a gang called the Jolly Stompers, but a lucky meeting with a high school counselor turned things around for him. With the counselor's help, Mario secured a Wall Street internship, opening his eyes to a world of opportunity and teaching him the value of keeping a low profile. As he ascended the ranks of Wall Street and started a family of his own, Mario's love for hip-hop was explored. In fact, it was in the music industry that Mario truly found his calling. Drawing on his love for music and his business acumen, he made a name for himself as a DJ, performing at clubs under the moniker Mr. Slick. As the popularity of rap soared, Mario recognized the opportunity to combine his passion for music with his entrepreneurial spirit. Meanwhile, his brother Jimmy, left to fend for himself in the absence of guardianship, found solace in the streets that adopted him. At just 10 years old, he fell in with a local Jamaican gang called the Untouchables, and by 13, he owned his first gun. Jimmy's life took a darker turn when he landed in Rikers Island at 18 on a firearm charge. It was during his time in Rikers that he immersed himself in the study of the Black Panthers, converted to Islam, and learned the trade from experienced drug dealers. In 1992, fate brought the brothers together once again. After the police raided Jimmy's home in search of drugs, he approached Mario with a proposition that would forever change their lives. They decided to start a music management company, using the music industry as a cover for Jimmy's illicit activities. Jimmy reached out to his brother Mario during a tough time. Mario had just finished serving weekends in Rikers for unintentionally helping a friend cash stolen checks. Jobless and unable to work on Wall Street, Mario saw a chance. With rap gaining popularity, he sensed an opportunity to represent emerging artists and producers in the challenging music industry. Their first major endeavor was the organization of a conference called How Can I Be Down in Miami Beach. This event attracted hip-hop's early moguls, including Russell Simmons, Benny Medina, Liar Cohen, Chris Lighty, and Mona Scott. After this event, the brothers teamed up and started Henchman Entertainment. With street smarts and business skills, the Henchman brothers became influential figures in the music industry. They were good at spotting talent and helping artists rise to fame and wealth. One of their earliest successes came in the form of the game. The Henchman brothers recognized his raw talent and helped shape his image and sound, catapulting him to stardom with hit songs like Hate It or Love It and How We Do. The game's success under Henchman Entertainment's guidance solidified their reputation as industry tastemakers. But the game was not the only artist that tasted success under their management. The Henchman brothers made waves in the 1990s by working with iconic artists such as Salt and Peppa, the pioneering female rap trio from New York. With their guidance, Salt and Peppa experienced a resurgence in their career, delivering chart-topping hits like Shoop and What a Man. Their influence extended beyond the rap genre. They played a pivotal role in the success of Akon, the Senegalese American singer, who dominated the charts with his infectious hits like Locked Up and Smack That. Henchman Entertainment's strategic management and marketing tactics propelled Akon 
Akon to international superstardom. Sean Kingston, another artist under the henchman umbrella, achieved massive success with his debut single Beautiful Girls. The song topped charts worldwide and showcased the henchman brother's knack for identifying and nurturing talent. During this time, Mario, the finance guy with Wall Street training, kept a low profile while managing the company's finances. Jimmy, five years younger, was the flashy and intimidating face of henchmen, describing himself as the gangster manager of hip-hop. They successfully transitioned from the streets to boardrooms, earning respect in the industry. The henchman brothers' impact on the music industry was undeniable. They brought a fresh perspective to the business, expanding opportunities for artists and bridging the gap between the streets and the mainstream. However, amidst their rise to prominence, the henchman brothers' empire was built on a foundation of secrets and shadows. Behind the scenes, Jimmy Henchman's involvement in illicit activities cast a dark cloud over their success. In 2011, the law finally caught up with Jimmy Roseman. He was arrested and charged with running a massive drug empire, flooding the streets with cocaine, and orchestrating the transportation of drugs and money across the country. The legal battle that followed was a turning point for the Henchman brothers. Jimmy, maintaining his innocence, was convicted and sentenced to two life terms in federal prison. The once powerful music mogul now faced a lifetime behind bars, forever separated from the industry he had once dominated. His claims of being a fall guy for the drugs and violence that plagued the music industry were ignored. Jimmy's arrest and conviction had a big impact on Mario Roseman. For eight years, Mario Roseman lived in the shadows, hiding in plain sight in Mexico under the alias of Tommy Davis. His life became a constant battle against fear and uncertainty as he navigated the challenges of living as a fugitive. Cuernavaca, the city where Mario sought refuge, was far from the peaceful sanctuary he had hoped for. It had become a battleground, torn apart by the violent clashes of Mexico's fiercest cartels. Mario's days were spent with his head on a swivel, always on high alert, aware that danger lurked around every corner. Living under an assumed identity, Mario kept a low profile. He immersed himself in the local culture, learning Spanish and blending in with the community. He avoided forming deep connections or serious relationships, knowing that attachments could compromise his safety. But even in the midst of his cautious existence, the past he had tried so desperately to leave behind caught up with him in a nightmarish moment. Mario, who had been evading drug trafficking charges for almost 10 years, was finally heading back to New York to face the legal consequences. His arrest felt like a relief, freeing him from the burden of his fake identity as Tommy Davis. Mario spent a year in federal prison before being released to live with his daughter's family in New Jersey. Currently awaiting sentencing, he plans to plead guilty to one count of conspiracy to distribute cocaine, which could result in a five-year-to-life sentence. Despite the impending consequences, Mario is at peace, taking care of his grandson and ready to face the consequences of his actions. He shares his story to discourage others from choosing a similar path. He emphasizes that dealing with illegal activities isn't worth it, as the government has the resources to catch up with you eventually. He advises the younger generation to find a different legal path in life. Sitting in a friendlies near Rahway, New Jersey, far from the turmoil of Cuernavaca, Mario reflects on the choices that led him to this point. He appears more like a suburban granddad than an urban gangster. Throughout Mario Roseman's journey, one thing has stayed the same, his strong commitment to family and loyalty. Despite the challenges, Mario's connection with his brother Jimmy has stayed strong. As Mario reflects on his life, he highlights the importance of family. He shares that his circle is small and family is at its core. Through the good and bad times, his family has been his driving force. When Jimmy apologized for involving Mario in illegal activities, Mario shrugged it off understanding the challenges they both faced as immigrants from a troubled home who found success in the music industry. Their shared experiences and brotherly love have kept them united, even. After years of separation, Mario's dedication to his family goes beyond words. He has proven his loyalty through his actions, willing to ride or die for his brother Jimmy, despite the consequences they both face. Is he coming back? Earlier, I mentioned that Jimmy Henchman was sentenced to two life terms in federal prison. One sentence is for drug trafficking, obstruction of justice, firearms violations, and financial crimes related to a large cocaine selling organization. The other life sentence is about his connection with 50 Cent and G Unit. 50 Cent and Jimmy Henchman's paths crossed, leading to a feud that would become one of hip hop's deadliest wars. During this time, Jimmy Henchman was a notorious gangster in the city. He had deep connections with Kenneth Supreme McGriff, who would later become 50 Cent's mentor. But initially, there were no signs of animosity between 50 Cent and Jimmy. In 2003, 50 Cent exploded onto the music scene with his groundbreaking album Get Rich or Die Trying. His raw talent and storytelling captivated audiences worldwide. As 50 Cent's star rose, Dr. Dre saw an opportunity to expand his empire and signed a promising West Coast rapper, The Game. Dre approached 50 Cent and proposed adding The Game to G-Unit. With G-Unit dominating the New York hip-hop scene and Young Buck representing the South, Dre believed that adding The Game would 
would solidify their presence on the West Coast. The deal was sealed, and the game officially became a member of G-Unit. However, there was one crucial factor that would ignite the flames of jealousy and resentment within Jimmy Henchman. You see, Jimmy Henchman was not only the game's manager, but also a man driven by ambition. He wanted the game to surpass 50 Cent in fame and success. Jimmy saw an opportunity to elevate the game's career by pitting him against 50 Cent, believing that a beef between the two would propel the game to new heights. But Henchman's envy didn't stop there. According to Tony Yayo, Jimmy Henchman's jealousy towards music exec and manager Chris Lighty was another reason for his dislike of 50 Cent. In an interview with DJ Vlad, Yayo revealed that Henchman was heavily envious of Lighty's success and influence in the industry. The beef between 50 Cent and the game officially began in February 2005. It started with subtle jabs and escalated into a full-blown war of words. The game, under the influence of Jimmy Henchman, took shots at 50 Cent in his music, questioning his credibility and challenging his dominance in the rap game. The beef between 50 Cent and the game continued to escalate in the following years, with both artists releasing diss tracks aimed at each other. The game's debut album, the documentary, became a battleground for their lyrical warfare. But it was an incident involving Jimmy Henchman's son that would take this beef to a whole new level of danger and violence. In March 2007, Jimmy Henchman's 14-year-old son, Antonio, was confronted by Tony Yayo and his associate, Lodi Mac. The altercation turned physical when Yayo slapped Antonio in the face, and Lodi Mac brandished a gun, threatening the young boy's life. Antonio, shaken by the incident, reported it to his father. This shocking incident was captured on camera, leaving no room for denial or escape. Tony Yayo was arrested and charged for his involvement, but the charges were eventually dismissed. Lodi Mac, however, took the blame for Yayo, claiming that he was the one who slapped Antonio. He was sentenced to two years in prison. Tragically, just weeks after his release, Lodi Mac was shot dead in New York. It was later revealed that Jimmy Henchman had ordered a hit on Lodi Mac as revenge for the incident involving his son. The hitman turned out to be Lodi Mac's former cellmate, who befriended him in prison and carried out the murder upon his release. This shocking turn of events shocked the entire hip-hop community. The beef between 50 Cent and Jimmy Henchman had escalated to a level where lives were being taken. The streets of New York City became a battleground for their personal vendetta. In retaliation, 50 Cent targeted Jimmy Henchman's associates in Atlanta. He left threatening phone calls and had his goons leave a dead rat in front of their door, a chilling message of his intent to strike fear into his enemy. In June 2010, Jimmy Henchman was arrested on charges of cocaine trafficking, money laundering, and witness tampering. His trial date was set for May 2012. However, the legal battle took an even darker turn when, in June 2012, Jimmy Henchman faced additional charges related to the murder of Lodi Mack. He was charged with murder for hire and conspiracy to commit murder. In an attempt to reduce his sentence, Jimmy sought plea bargains by providing information on other individuals. Throughout this period, 50 Cent didn't hold back in his attacks on Jimmy Henchman. He released songs like Complicated on his mixtape, The Eve. Lost tape in May 2012, where he took shots at Jimmy and accused him of being a snitch. The feud between 50 Cent and Jimmy Henchman reached its climax when Jimmy was convicted on November 29, 2017. One and a half years after the first conviction, Jimmy Henchman was sentenced to a second life imprisonment. Following Jimmy Henchman's conviction, 50 Cent continued to taunt him on social media. He took pleasure in mocking his longtime rival, reveling in his victory. However, there is even more to Jimmy's story. In the final days of Donald Trump's presidency, there was a rush for pardon, with figures like Kodak Black and Lil Wayne, as well as Trump's associates Steve Bannon and Roger Stone receiving them. Among those seeking a pardon was Jimmy Henchman. Supporters claim that Jimmy is unlawfully held in prison, pointing to a conversation between Trump and NFL legend Jim Brown in December 2020. In that talk, Trump supposedly promised that Jimmy would be released home for Christmas. Despite Trump leaving office a year later, Jimmy is still in federal prison, sparking a unique legal dispute. Jimmy Henchman's lawyers argued that he's serving an outdated sentence, and they say the case portrayed him as a drug kingpin without enough proof. Advocacy gained traction when Kanye West talked about the case with Trump in 2018. Over the next two years, there were talks with White House teams, including Jared Kushner. Attempts to get help from President Joe Biden have not worked, and legal experts are questioning if Trump's spoken promise on the call is enough to make the commutation valid. Jimmy's lawyers argue that he should be released from prison and are urging for his freedom. Impactful black management exec. Jimmy's early career saw him working with artists like Mark Sparks, Groove Theory, and The Game. His ability to spot talent and connect with artists on a personal level set him apart from others in the industry. He had a knack for understanding the pulse of the streets and translating that into successful music careers. Despite the controversy surrounding his name, it is important to acknowledge the impact Jimmy Henchman had on the music industry. His contributions cannot be denied as he played a crucial role in shaping the careers of artists and influencing the direction of hip-hop. There are several influential black music 
music executives in hip hop, not just Jimmy Henchman. In fact, let's highlight some of the most impactful ones who have. Shaped artists' careers and driven the culture forward. They've launched successful management companies, secured million dollar endorsement deals, and made significant contributions to the billion dollar hip hop industry. Deb Antney, the CEO of Mize Entertainment, is a force to be reckoned with in the Atlanta rap scene and the hip hop industry as a whole. Her journey began in 2007 when she launched her management company, Mize Entertainment, with a clear vision in mind to discover and nurture raw talent and propel them to stardom. Deb's keen eye for talent quickly became evident as she started working with some of the most influential artists in the game. One of her earliest success stories was Gucci Mane, whom she managed during his rise to fame. Under Deb's guidance, Gucci Mane became a household name. But Gucci Mane was just the beginning. Deb went on to work with other notable artists such as OJ DeJuiceman, Waka Flocka, Nicki Minaj, and French Montana. Her ability to spot potential and cultivate it into success is unparalleled. What sets Deb Antney apart from other music managers is her dedication to her artists. She goes above and beyond to ensure their success, often taking on multiple roles to support their career. From negotiating record deals to overseeing marketing strategies, Deb is involved in every aspect of her artist's journeys. But it hasn't always been smooth sailing for Deb. She has faced her fair share of challenges and setbacks along the way. However, her resilience and belief in her artists have allowed her to overcome any obstacles that come her way. Queen Latifah and Shaquem Compare have also made an undeniable impact in the industry. Their story begins in high school where they first crossed paths and formed a bond that would shape their careers for years to come. Together, Queen Latifah and Shaquem launched the Flavor Unit, a collective of MCs that showcased their talent and creativity. But their influence extended far beyond music. They recognized the power of diversifying their portfolio and ventured into management. Under their guidance, the Flavor Unit managed artists like Naughty by Nature, Outkast, and Monica, helping them reach new heights of success. They understood the importance of building a brand and creating opportunities for their artists. But Queen Latifah and Shaquem's impact went beyond music management. They expanded their presence in film and TV, with Queen Latifah becoming a respected actress and producer. Their production company, Flavor Unit Entertainment, has been behind numerous successful projects, further solidifying their status as a power player in the entertainment industry. What sets Queen Latifah and Shaquem apart is their commitment to uplifting and empowering the black community. They have used their platform to advocate for social justice and equality, using their influence to bring about positive change. Their dedication to making a difference sets them apart from other music management executives. Kevin Coach K. Lee and Pierre P. Thomas are other names that have become synonymous with success in the world of hip-hop. Together, they founded Quality Control Music, a label that has become one of the most accomplished imprints in the music industry. Their story began with a shared vision and a passion for music. Kevin Coach K. Lee, with his background in sports management, and Pierre P. Thomas, with his experience in the music industry, joined forces to create a powerhouse management team. Their goal was simple, to discover and develop the next generation of hip-hop superstars. Under their guidance, Quality Control Music has become a force to be reckoned with. Artists like Migos, Lil Baby, and City Girls have risen to prominence under their management. Coach K and P's ability to identify talent and provide the necessary support and resources for their artists to thrive is unparalleled. They've built a close-knit community at Quality Control Music, making it feel like a family for their artists. This sense of togetherness encourages collaboration and helps everyone on their roster succeed. Coach K and P stand out for their smart business skills and their knack for adapting to the changing music industry. They're savvy with digital platforms and social media, using them to connect with fans and boost their artists. Their forward-looking strategy keeps them at the forefront of the industry. Charlie Mack is another prominent figure in the rap scene. Charlie's journey began with his involvement in the Philadelphia rap scene where he worked closely with acts like Dougie Fresh, Roxanne Chante, and Biz Markie. He had an innate understanding of the culture and a knack for spotting the next big thing. But Charlie's impact goes beyond his work with established artists. He played a pivotal role in the career of the Fresh Prince Will Smith, helping him transition from a local rapper to a global superstar. Charlie's guidance and support were instrumental in shaping Will Smith's early success and opening doors for him in the entertainment industry. He played a crucial role in the rise of artists like Meek Mill and Boys Two Men, recognizing their potential and providing them with the platform they needed to succeed. What sets Charlie Mack apart is his commitment to his community. He has used his platform and influence to give back, organizing charity events and initiatives to support underprivileged youth in Philadelphia. His dedication to making a positive impact on the lives of others is truly inspiring. Don Poo, also known as Robert Cummins, is another name that resonates with greatness in music management. Don Poo's journey began with a passion for music and a keen eye for talent. He quickly made a name for himself in the industry, working with some of the greatest rap artists of all time. From Foxy Brown to Nas, Jay-Z, and Shine, Don Poo's roster reads like a who's who of
of hip hop. His ability to connect with artists on a personal level and understand their unique vision set him apart from other music managers. Don Poo had a knack for recognizing the potential in artists and helping them navigate the complexities of the music industry. His guidance and support were instrumental in shaping the careers of these iconic artists. But Don Poo's impact goes beyond artist management. He ventured into the restaurant franchise business and launched Brooklyn Chop House, further expanding his empire. This entrepreneurial spirit and willingness to explore new avenues of success have solidified his status as a true industry mogul. What sets Don Poo apart is his ability to adapt to the ever-changing landscape of the music industry. He has embraced new technologies and platforms, utilizing them to promote his artists and connect with fans. His forward-thinking approach has allowed him to stay relevant and maintain his position as a respected figure in the industry. In addition to his work as a music manager and entrepreneur, Don Poo has also made significant contributions to the community. He has been involved in various philanthropic endeavors, using his success to give back and uplift those in need. Anthony Sala is another music manager who has made a significant impact in the industry with his expertise in finance and his ability to secure endorsement and investment deals worth hundreds of millions of dollars. Anthony's journey began with with a passion for both music and finance. Anthony Soleil stands out for his talent in using financial expertise to help musicians. He became a sought after manager by working with artists like Nas, Future, YG, and Kendrick Lamar. What makes him unique is his skill in handling finances and negotiating deals that not only make his clients more money, but also boost their careers. Anthony has secured endorsement deals, investments, and partnerships that have taken his clients to new levels of success. His knowledge of finance and ability to spot lucrative opportunities make him a valuable asset. Anthony's strategic thinking and business skills have led to deals that not only bring in significant money, but also enhance the overall brand and image of his clients. But Anthony's impact goes beyond financial success. He has played a significant role in shaping the careers of his clients, providing guidance and support every step of the way. His ability to balance the financial aspect with the artistic vision of his clients has earned him the trust and respect of both artists and industry professionals. Justice won't be done to this video without the mention of Lenny Santiago. Lenny S, also known as Lenny Santiago, is a music executive who has spent the past 30 years making moves behind the scenes for some of the biggest stars in hip hop. His journey began at Bad Boy Records, where he started his career and quickly made a name for himself. His ability to connect with artists and understand their creative vision set him apart from others in the industry. He played a crucial role in the success of Puff Daddy, The Notorious Big, and Mace, helping to shape their careers and establish them as icons in the industry. After his time at Bad Boy Records, Lenny joined Rockefeller Records, where he continued to make significant contributions to hip-hop. He worked closely with artists like Jay-Z, Rihanna, and Kanye West, facilitating their moves behind the scenes and ensuring their success. Currently, Lenny S. holds the position of Senior Vice President at Rock Nation, one of the most influential entertainment companies in the world. In this role, he continues to work closely with artists, providing guidance and support to help them reach their full potential. Lenny's ability to understand the ever-changing landscape of the music industry and adapt accordingly is unparalleled. He has a keen eye for talent and a deep understanding of the business side of the industry. His expertise in artist development, marketing, and branding has made him an invaluable asset to the artists he works with. He has also played a significant role in shaping the culture of hip-hop. His contributions to the industry have helped pave the way for future generations of artists and executives. Meanwhile, Jimmy Henchman's impact as a music mogul continues. 14 years after the murder that led to one half of his father's life sentence, James Roseman Jr. is now a successful manager representing Ice Spice. Jimmy sees this as a form of redemption and feels more at peace. If you enjoyed this video, click on the card showing on your screen right now for more videos.